Hey guys, I want to do a follow-up review to these two knives. Tana Boca Puco by... Oh wait. Tana Boca Puco by Tops. And the Trivitata. Trivitata knife by Condor. Um, both designed by the same designer, but made by two different companies. And they're very much alike. So what I did is I did five different sessions where I went out... And I tried to make a long video, and I knew it was just going to end up being boring for you guys. Um, I went out and I did rhododendron wood here. I used a bunch of the rock hard stuff. So this stuff, guys, is literally, I mean, it's crack your head stuff. I mean, this, you do not want to get hit over the head with rhododendron wood. It is, see how it twists? It has like a natural twist to the grain. So even trying to baton this little piece of wood here is almost virtually impossible for these little knives. Although the tops does baton better. Um, it has a higher scandy so it cuts through, splits the wood better than the shorter scandy does. So um, do know that. But honestly, when it comes to these little knives, you don't want to do too big, you know, pieces like this that are softer. They're fine, but not this rhododendron wood. You try to chop this stuff. And it just does not want to split. It's really horrible wood. It's got a lot of grain structure in it. So when you try to break it, it just, it don't snap. It cracks and it twists. And trying to baton through this kind of stuff is just insane. But what I did was, what I wanted to do was find out how well the apexes of these knives would hold up. And since I did the original edges on the video, the videos that I talked about these knives, um, I had worked on them before then, but um, the work that I've done since then, I have not touched these to sharpen them. I've only stropped them. I only did simple touch-up work with them. I haven't had to take any heavy-duty stone or any kind of work to them trying to get the edge back on it. Like I'm talking you can like maybe like a white rod to touch up, which I don't like to do too much. Um, but with these, I touched up the tips just a little bit. But that's after five sessions, guys. I didn't have to do anything with these knives. Both 1095. Excellent steel for Condor. I'm shocked. I, am, I quit using their knives like seven years ago. I was like, I'm done with Condor because of their 1075. I just didn't like it. It was too soft. I was always having to fix their edges, especially because their Scandi grinds were just a pain in the butt. But this, you guys, I'm telling you, they're 1095 for me, at least for my knife. All I can talk about is my own personal experience has been awesome. So what I did with these to test them was I made a truckload of these tent stakes. I did a ton of square notching, seven notching. And this isn't like pop out easy stuff. And this is like, let's see if I can get it to show you guys. If you know your woods, which I don't know wood too great, but I do know what's rock hard and what's not. This stuff, it's just super shiny, resonated wood. It's very hard to work with. It's super strong. But what I did with these knives is, there's the one I was looking at. Oh, this one. I took this five different times outside and I twisted the edges and ground them, just ground the apex into the wood until it just, you can just hear it just scraping like this, like that, but a ton. I did that a ton with this rhododendron wood with both knives. So what I did is I took the main part that usually goes dull right here on the belly. So this stuff is like glass. It is not like your normal wood. It is just, it's horrible stuff. It's, it's not the wood that you want to use for carving. I'll tell you that. It makes good spoons and, and bowls if you have the right tools because it's rock hard and it will last a long time. And you don't have to do any kind of treatment to them because um, it's just full of its own resin. So it's just really good stuff. But anyways, I did a ton of work with them. Um, and then... This last day, after I did this like five different times, I did like a couple videos that were like 35, 40 minutes long, and they just, they got too long, it was just too annoying, so I'm not into that, it just, 
it's weird for me but uh, you know this is just a hobby for me so you just have to take me at my word this stuff does not baton it is a pain in the butt it's very twisty but the tops was actually better at batoning through this than the condor the condor shorter grind gets caught up in the wood and it wants to kind of go off course more and but if you're doing normal wood it's fine it's just this tough stuff but with even with normal wood i could tell the difference with the tops it just has a higher grind and for some reason this higher grind it would split the wood further and not get bound up because with this one the wood splits but then it catches on this larger portion of metal here the wall and so it sticks a little bit more and gets wedged in the wood worse this has less to hit the wood so you get less friction you get more split and it goes through better so just know that if that's important to you these aren't very big knives so i don't think they're going to be a major issue for batoning and things like that for you um but for me what i found better is that i thought that this would be my knife of choice after i used and was going to use these and i just at the beginning that's why you can't take that original you know necessary review but like uh, open box tabletop type reviews when somebody hasn't done a lot of work with them i already knew that i would love this knife and i do it's great i like it i just this thing's leaps and bounds better than most knives that i've had um it might be your main knife for life. It is awesome. It feels so good in the hand. I like that it's thick up front because you can get a good solid grip. But for me, it's it's not the kind of work that I'm always wanting to do with a knife. This is a great camp bushcraft knife uh, for all kinds of woodwork that you're going to do at camp. But when it comes to the detailed kind of work that I like to do, personally, like twisting, doing intricate, in, intricate, <laughs> I'm saying that word, intricate, uh, detailed carving where you're where you're doing detailed more carving um, back cuts where you grab the knife you know just different angles where you're gonna hold the knife handle a lot I thought I wasn't gonna like this that much because it it kind of goes down right here and your pinky doesn't grab it as solid as this one but the handle itself locks in to your hand to my hand it does it just it doesn't twist it's just in so when you're doing work and you're twisting especially when I was doing that heavy this wood being so hard and doing a lot of notching and twisting this thing popped out stuff so much better because I can lock it into the grip of my hand it does have one flaw and that it's the same shape either way that you hold it so if you're somebody who's really particular about that um, for self-defense waking up in the night type of knife where you need to grab a knife real quick if you're somebody who isn't paying attention you might grab this and have it upside down and not even know it because there's no way to tell so I do suggest if you get it, you want to have this knife, you might want to notch it on top, like little notches here or the bottom, whatever, just so you can get a different fill and have that like that memory, you know, instant memory to where you can fill it and know that you're holding it right side up. So just, just letting you guys know that. With this one, um, I noticed with once I got ti more tired and really trying to notch out the wood, it's thicker because of the shorter grind so um it doesn't bite in is is good it it's still great it's an awesome knife but comparing it to this one it just was so much better because it just pops the wood out better bites into the wood deeper it's just got a thinner apex this one um you have to work out a little bit more and with the tops the belly rolls better so when you're when you're popping out notches like when you dig in a notch here like a seven notch and you go to pop out the wood with the belly of this knife it rocks really good you can rock the belly and pop the wood out with this one with the handle when you're rocking it just you have to rock it a little bit more and especially at the belly because the belly's not as curved it's more of a smooth but some people like that for feather sticking slicing but for me when it comes to notching it just it's a little bit less comfortable for me but the major thing that i felt with this knife was the bigger handle wants to twist the rounder handle it doesn't have any squares and i know everybody's like they want their handle to be nice and smooth but honestly it's kind of nice to have a little bit of square a little bit of shape in a handle because i've found that they start to twist and i feel like this one would blister my hand more and it felt that way when i was using it that um like with my callus right here on my hand my main callus when i carve this is like my carving hand so i get calluses on these fingers 
it felt like this one was really wanting to wear into that callus more. Um, and it was just harder to hold on to for pressure cuts and stuff. So, you know, it just matters of, I have nerve damage in my hands, so um, I feel it a lot quicker and my forearms and stuff will get weak in my grip. So it just depends on how healthy you are. You might have a better grip and it just depends on who you are and what you want to use your knife for. So anyways, guys, I really love these knives. I think uh, Condor's 1095A flipping plus. Um, I just went out, I did this work, chopped on that wood. It deemed up the tips just a hair. I mean, it was like you couldn't even see it and you couldn't even feel it in the paper. So I just dropped them for about three minutes. And they're equal. The, the condor is literally equal to the tops. I mean, I can't feel a difference with the edges. I have not touched these to a stone, to nothing other than just dropping them. I took the, the rod on just the tip. I don't like to use the rods because it kind of changes the edge of your knife. Um, if you want a toothy edge, you can use a rod on there. But just to get out a little bit of deems or anything, you can use them. But just honestly, there was no, no difference between these knives. Condor's 1095, guys. I'm highly impressed. I mean, Tops has always been awesome. I love Tops 1095. Um, this does have a thinner tip. The Tops knife compared um, to the Condor. But they're 1095. Both these guys, great. I am so impressed with the Condor, though, because, you know, they've had a really bad reputation about having too soft of steel. I'll tell you right now, guys, after I did the work with this knife, at first I was kind of iffy because of the apex. The, um, it had a little bit of burnt steel because whoever did the belt work on this really just rolled the knife a little bit too much and kind of burnt the edge a little bit. And once I got past that, um, when I did my original sharpening, the thing's been flipping excellent. Uh, I cannot recommend this more. This is an excellent steel. They're 1095 for Condor, A plus for me on my knife. I don't know about anybody else. I'm just going by what I've dealt with. I put these things through the ringer for Scandinavian knives, Scandi, Scandi grinds that have a slight convex. Um, this knife works way better without the V edge, that crappy V edge that Tops puts on here. But you know, it's Tops. It, they're not going to take the time to have to convex this out. So. It's something that you're going to have to teach yourself. You can get that V-grind off of there. Just do the work. Um, it takes a little bit of time. It's not too hard. I mean, this isn't perfect. It's still got little scuffs and stuff on it. But, yeah, there's a ton of videos, guys. And I guarantee you the benefits are worth it. Learn how to do it, and you'll be just so much happier with certain knives. But, anyways, that's my opinion on these knives. They both got really good cheese. I love the tops better. It's got to do this stitching really good oils in the the leather it's a thicker leather it just smells awesome if a smell is a big thing to you but it's just that kind of sheath that is going to just look really cool over time and the, t the use that i put on it already it's already just getting this really cool I, I wear this thing everywhere so it's getting a little bit more worn than this one i do take this one out and about too but it's a little bit stiffer stiffer leather but it's nice too and it locks in like like a kydex sheath really i mean just it pops in there it's just nice and solid both knives really lock in good and both do really awesome feather sticking i mean if you want feather stick knives these puko knives are awesome and this one has a higher grind so if you're a beginner i would say the tops would be fine with you with the v-grind on there um but once you get that grind to a convex it's a little bit harder to do feathers and stuff with because it wants to bite into the wood more this one naturally will be the knife that if you're a beginner um, you'll be able to learn how to feather stick quicker with it it rolls over faster and you'll get little curls and stuff but it's easier to control for a beginner but both knives are excellent feather sticking knives and just love these knives so anyways guys hopefully that'll help you with your purchases on these ones i just wanted to put out another video on them um, to compare the two i really wanted to do that and um yeah excellent blades so
God bless, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Take it easy.